Hey, what's up, everybody? Hope you guys are having a good day today. Um, I want to talk to you guys about what God wants from us. You know, um, a lot of times I think we get lost in, in the doing of things. I think we get lost in, in what looks right or appears right and, and godly and, and, and religious and righteous and things like that. Um, which are all good things, but unless we're doing what God um, wants the most, then we're kind of missing the point. So I want to just hit on that really quick. This is going to be a quick Facebook live. So I just want to welcome everybody who's joining right now. Bless you guys. Good to see you guys. Bless you. God is good. God is good. Let's grow. Come on, guys. Grow with me as I grow with God. Let's grow in Christ. So let's talk about this really quick. God wants our actions to change more than he wants our speech to change, more than he wants our song to change, right? Right. A lot of times we, you know, we, we, we get it mixed up and we're like, man, I used to love Christian, uh, a regular worldly rock and I used to love worldly music and worldly rap and, and I used to just listen to hip hop or I used to make hip, hip hop and, and I used to do this for the world. But now I listen to Christian music. I listen to Christian rock, Christian rap. Uh, I make Christian music, right? And, and, and all that is good, right? Um, however, a lot, I think a lot of times we get confused and we think because our singing has changed. Um, you know, our confession, our words have changed. We think that that's all God sees or that that is enough to please God. And in, 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 in the whole Bible, we see God emphasizing our actions, right? The Bible says that in, in, in the days of, in the days of Saul, King Saul, there was a prophet, right? The prophet Samuel. And we know about prophet Samuel. And we know that God spoke through the prophet Samuel. And we know that he dealt with, with King Saul a whole lot. And in, in one time, Saul was out on a mission from the Lord, um, but he didn't fully obey God. Um, he actually did disobeyed, did something he wasn't supposed to do, right? And he actually offered um, a sacrifice to God and said that he did this to offer God some sacrifice, right? So he tried to justify himself and, and, and try to make it out to, to, to seem like he was doing it in order to honor God, to worship God some more. Right. To give God some more offerings of worship. Right. And sacrifice. Um, but this is what God said through the prophet Samuel. God said <laughs> to obey is better than to sacrifice. Right. So I don't care what we're sacrificing. I don't care how many times a week we're going to church. I don't care how many Bible studies we're attending. Um, even right now on Zoom or Facebook Live or, or our favorite minister's website, whatever it is, Skype, whatever it is, right? FaceTime, whatever. If that's all we're doing, but we're failing to actually do the things that God has called us to do, live in a way that he's called us to live in, they were missing the point. He says to obey is better than to sacrifice. Jesus said this. Jesus said, he said to, um, to obey is, is, is what is better, right? Than to confess. How did he say that? He said, many are going to come to me and call me Lord. And Jesus is like, why do you call me Lord if you don't do the things that I say? Right. And it makes sense. It's like, why do you call somebody a Lord, a king, a master, a owner, a God, a father? Like, why do you call somebody your master and your owner, your Lord, your boss, your ruler? If you're not going to do the things that they command us to do, it just doesn't make It doesn't make sense. So, so, so Jesus is like, why do you call me Lord? You don't do the things that I say, right? The Bible says that. God says, these people honor me with their lips, but in their hearts, they're far from me. Their hearts are so far from me. They might talk like they're close to me and that, and like they love me, but they only honor me with their lips. Meaning it's just talk. It's just a praise. It's just a, a song. It's just a speech. He says, but their hearts are far from me for they don't 
do what I say, right? And it's crazy to think that we can we can confess the Lord, we can wear Christian t-shirts, we can post Christian things on social media, but think that our actions, our conduct, our works, our fruit, Everything that Jesus talks about and God spoke spoke about so many times to the apostles in the New Testament, we think that's not as important. It's like God wants you to do what he called you to do more than he wants you to go to church, more than he wants you to listen to Christian rock or Christian rap everywhere you go, more than he wants you to 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 make christian music or to make christian art or to or to make whatever christian skill that you have right whatever that thing is or whatever you talk about right he he wants you over that he wants you to do what he said to do over that the bible says that to obey is better than to sacrifice Come on, to obey is better than to sacrifice. Your obedience to God's word is way more important to God than your worship, than your praise. You know, a lot of times we think that God just wants us to to, to sing to him or he wants us to go to church and, and talk to other Christians about him or raise our hands and, 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 you know, and look like we love him. But in fact, Jesus is like, look, unless you keep my word, you can't be my disciple. And God says, if, 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 if you, if you love me, you will keep my word. <laughs> and if, and if you will love me and you will love people, you will actually keep my word by doing that. But it's like, we, we, we try to pick one. We try to, we try to do this, but not that. And this, but not that, you know, we're, we're, we're people. And a lot of times we don't renew our minds and we try to go back to our old ways. The old us, we always try to get over on somebody. Right. We always try to take more than what was offered and given to us. Right. Somebody says, oh, yeah, you can have some of my my birthday cake. And instead of taking a regular slice, we take a huge slice because we want to get over on somebody. We want more than what was told to us that we can have. Amen. First and amen. First. Hey, Roshni, bless you. Bless you. Bless you guys. Good to see you. So. We try to get over. We try to, oh, we, I'm going to do this and call myself a Christian. Or I'm going to do this and think that God is so pleased with me. I'm going to do this and expect to enter the kingdom of God one day. I'm going to do this and just expect all of God's blessings and promises through the new covenant. But I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that. It's like, look, the Bible says continuously, God wants obedience. God wants us to do what he said to do over our sacrifice, over our offerings, over our worship, over our praise. He wants our actions to change more than he wants our speech and our song to change. A lot of times we're like, yeah, I'm a Christian rapper, man. I serve the Lord. I live for God. I'm all about God. Yeah, I'm a Christian artist. I'm a Christian singer. I'm a Christian rock star. This and that. Yeah, I'm a Christian this. I'm a Christian that. I wear Christian t-shirts. I put Christian quotes on Facebook, this and that. And, 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 and all that is cool if you are doing the will of the God on top of that, if you are obeying God's word primarily, you know, anything we do for God is not as important as us living for God, doing God's will, obeying God's commands. It's crazy when Jesus is like, why do you call me Lord if you don't do the things that I say? Jesus said in the end time, when he returns one day soon, his appearing, his coming, People are going to say, hey, Lord, 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 right? Confession. Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we work miracles in your name? Didn't we do powerful things in your name? He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. And a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, you got to get to know the Lord. You got to have a prayer life. You got to have a prayer life. But they miss this. He said, I never knew you. Well, how come he didn't, he didn't know them? He said, you doer of iniquity, you worker of unrighteousness, get away from me, depart from me. You cannot enter this kingdom. It's not for you, <laughs> right? So we we're, we miss the thing that God repeats over and over and over and over again in his word to us. That's right, Darius. That's right, bro. We got, we got to remember God wants our obedience more than he wants our praise, our worship, our singing, our song, our, our church attendance, right? He wants us to actually do what his word says to do. He's not impressed. He's not amused. He's not pleased with us. Just, you know, listening to Christian music, uh, 
hanging out with Christians, going to church, going to Bible study, wearing Christian shirts, wearing Christian hats, getting Christian tattoos, like doing all these Christian stuff. But he wants us to live the Christian life way more than that. <laughs> like that stuff is irrelevant. Like <laughs> who cares? It's like, it's like you having a girlfriend and you got pictures of you and your girlfriend all over social media. You got a, 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 a promise ring or you got a, a, a engagement ring or you got a whatever. I love her ring. You got a hit a her shirt. She's got a his shirt with the arrow pointing. Y'all got a, a, a love tat, a matching love tattoo, heart tattoo. You got her name tatted on you. She's got her, your name tatted on her. And you guys are always talking about each other. Yeah, this is my girl. This is my man. Yeah, this and that, this and that. And at the end of the day, you got four other girlfriends. <laughs> you cheating on her. You don't love her. You don't respect her. You only want her for sex. At the end of the day, you're not living like a real boyfriend. You're not really living like what your tattoos and your shirt and your Facebook posts are declaring that you believe, right? So we got to get back to that. We got to get back to God. Listen, God wants people who are doers of the word, not hearers only. Because those who are hearers only, the Bible says in James, they deceive themselves. We lie to ourselves when we act like we're doing right just because we're saying things or we're attending places, but we're not actually doing the things that God has called us to, to do, right? We're deceiving ourselves. We walk away from the mirror. We don't even know what we look like, amen? So, so God said, I desire obedience more than sacrifice. These people, their, 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 their lips honor me, but their hearts are way far from me. They don't do what I said. So I just want to remind you guys of that today. Like we got to stop with the, with the acting guys. We got to stop with the religiosity and, and with the, you know, seeming and looking and appearing like a Christian, but not actually living the Christian life because at the end of the day, we are mostly hurting ourselves. Listen, guys, y'all think God is getting hurt. Y'all think, you know, we're doing wrong to God. Y'all think he's the one that's getting the short end of the stick. Y'all could think that other people are getting hurt, which they probably are. But in reality, we are the ones who are mostly going to pay for not living the real Christian life. Like God is a reward of those who diligently seek him. The righteous get rewarded. The humble get exalted. The humble see his grace, right? Without holiness, we shall not see the Lord. Doers of this, 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 this will not enter the kingdom of God, right? <laughs> like God will not be mocked. Do not be fooled. God will not be mocked for what a man sows, he will reap, right? God will give all to all people according to their works. So we got all these scriptures. How come we're not really excited about living for him how come these scriptures that we hear they're not really producing a fear of the lord a, a respect for his word a desire to obey him how come we think that living for god is going to church or bible study living for god is watching christian movies or or jesus movies jesus stories or or christian youtube videos how come we think that's the christian life or, or, or even doing a facebook live right now like like how come we think this is the christianity that he wants when all over his bible all over his word all over in the bible it says he wants our works to match his desires, his will. Amen. So we got to do a little mind shift and we got to go from the appearance of good, the appearance of godliness, right? There's so many people, right? They deny the power of the gospel. They want to appear like they're living for God, but inwardly they're denying the power of the gospel that changes them, right? They have a a image of godliness, but they're not actually living it. A lot of people quote that scripture and, 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 you know, or, oh, you have a, you have a, a, an appearance, an image of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. That, that means, you know, you read the Bible 
and 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 you don't sin, but you're you're denying the power of God to work miracles and heal the sick. That's not what that scripture is about. <laughs> Let's get into context. Yeah, I love that scripture, and I've and I've, I know I know I've probably used it before incorrectly talking about um you know the gifts of the spirit and stuff like that. But that's not that's not what the scripture is saying. The scripture is saying you have a form of godliness. But you deny deny the power of godliness. You deny the power of the gospel that is supposed to transform you, which is the power that you're supposed to walk in and bear fruit to God. The Bible says that we've been crucified with Christ, buried with Christ, and raised to life in order to bear fruit to God. Okay? And God says, I don't want your worship, your praise, your singing your Christian rapping, your Christian singing, your Christian hanging out, your Christian posts, your Christian t-shirts, more than I want your actual Christian life. God wants us to obey and do the things that he's commanded us to do first and foremost. That's got to be our top priority if we have time after doing his will. If we have time, then I guess we can, you know, Go make some music or go listen to some music or go to a, a worship concert or go go to a Christian uh, church conference or go to, if we have time after really obeying him. Amen. The gospel and the power of the gospel to transformation. Right. That has to come first, guys. You know, don't 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 be them people that when you see Jesus at his return, that he's like. I love the Christian t-shirts you wore. I love all the Christian clothes that you bought or that you sold. I love all the Instagram pages that you, that you, you know, you posted where you posted a lot of things at. I love all the conferences you attended. I love all the Christian books you bought from Barnes and Noble and Lifeway and Amazon. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to tell you to depart from me because you were a doer of iniquity. Like, I hope that's not you, you know, and I don't want that to be me. You know, Jesus said, yeah, he said we were to, the, the word says that we are together with the saints. Don't put that above obeying God, though. The Bible says desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. But stop thinking and stop talking and stop researching and, and, and preaching and, and focusing all on the gifts and not focusing on actually living for God and obeying his word. Don't put that on, on top of that. The Bible does say if you if you can't handle the the you know the lust and in the, the fleshly peer pressure, the burning, the passion, get married. But don't put your marriage before your obedience to God. Don't put don't put don't put your woman, don't put your man before God. Don't put your children before God. Huh? The Bible does say, you know, do the work of ministry. Be equipped for the work of ministry. Preach the gospel to the lost, right? Be a witness of Jesus. The Bible does say that. But don't put your ministry or your witnessing or your evangelism before actually obeying the Lord. What am I talking about obeying? You know what I'm talking about obeying. All the fruit of the Spirit, that's what you're supposed to do. All the works of the flesh, that's what you're not supposed to do. You know what's listed. If you don't know, just go to Galatians. Matter of fact, just read just read the whole New Testament like right now and you'll see everything I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about. Most of you guys... Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what we're not supposed to do. Y'all know what we are supposed to do by the power of the Spirit in us, right? But it takes our submission. It takes our intentionality, our desire to want to live for God, right? It's not all Holy Spirit. Let's not, let's not get into that weird doctrine. You know, the Holy Spirit does it all through me. I just, I'm just here, you know, and if he wants to be good, he'll be good through me, right? No, like we have to actually deny ourselves. Jesus, our Lord, our master, our teacher, who, who doesn't lie, he said, deny yourself. He said, pick up your cross. That means become a sacrifice for me if you want to be my disciple. If you want to have eternal life, man, man. So we got to get back to reality and just be real, man. Be honest with ourselves, man. Let's be sober, you guys. Fearson said, sitting at Walmart parking lot with the door of the car open, blasting this. Hey, what's up, Walmart, man? Walmart, listen. Hey, if I, if I see people on top of each other at the Walmart, man, y'all can't be talking about churches and, and, and Christians gathering all, all, all close and all that, right? 
Y'all, y'all wanna, <laughs> y'all wanna risk getting this, get, getting this sickness for some, uh, for some fried chicken and potato salad and all that, but y'all don't wanna let people come to church, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> Walmart. What's up, Walmart? <laughs> what's up, Walmart? Man, we listen. Jesus is Lord. Man, I want to encourage everybody who believes Jesus to walk like you believe Jesus. I want to encourage everybody who says Jesus is Lord to obey your Lord. Who says Jesus is King to obey your King. Man, I dare any of you to watch a medieval movie. Like, w- watch one of them old school movies, medieval, you know, gladiator, um, old school movies where people had kings, where people really had lords. I dare you to watch one of them movies and I want you to observe and watch and analyze what would happen to the individual who would choose to disobey or rebel against the king, against the Lord. And maybe we'll get a, a better picture of, 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 of what it means when we say Lord Jesus, King Jesus, Master Jesus, right? I mean, <laughs> I don't know who... I, I don't know who grew up with their father or their mother or any authority over them, but I'm pretty sure we know what a father is when we refer to God as our father. I'm pretty sure he's not our father just because he gave us life, just because his spirit is in us, um, or just because he provides for us. See, a lot of people want the father who provides, but they don't want the father who commands, or they don't want the father who corrects and spanks a little bit and redirects you and disciplines you and tells you, stop living for money, you're fleshly, stop living, stop lusting after women, you flesh, stop living for yourself, you flesh, stop focusing on this, you flesh. Right? They don't want that father. But I dare you to go into any household and look at what a father, a father does in his home. The father's the one who sets the rules, who says the do's and the don'ts. And when the don'ts take place, he's the one who warns. And after the warning doesn't get obeyed, he's the one who disciplines. (laughs) Come on. Like God is not differently, different than the Lord that I just mentioned in those medieval movies. Than the king that I just mentioned in those castle King Arthur type movies, right? And God is not different in the fathers that are in in, in most of these households. Like he, he he's still the one in charge. Like he's the head for a reason, amen. So I just want to remind you guys, like doing things for God, singing, saying things about God, that's cool. But me and God and the Bible and Samuel and Jesus and Paul and Peter. We say obedience to God is better. And that's what I'm going to leave you with, okay? Love you guys. If you think this this will help somebody share this video, if this helped you, like it, comment on it. Come on, support. You know, <laughs> you know a lot of times we don't want to support um, ministries um, financially or through prayer, but at least we can support people. You know, if, if, if we feel like they're helping, at least we can support with a like or a comment or a share or something, right? Leave a review on a page or something, right? Like, you know, we, we leave all these reviews for Amazon products. <laughs> we, we like all these YouTube videos about DIY, making your own house and your own shed and building your own barn. And, and, and we support these channels and we support all these, all these people. But when somebody feeds us the word, you know, we, 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 we kind of become cheap, right? We kind, we kind of become, <laughs> you know, takers and not givers. So, you know, if you, if this bless you, like the like the um like the video, comment on the video, share the video, right? If you guys like these free prayer shirts, I'm gonna leave the link down below. If you guys want to join our Tuesday night online Bible studies through Zoom, they are free, but you have to sign up to get the code, and you have to sign up to get an email telling you what we're gonna be reading. Okay, it's on every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time. If you want to join our online Bible studies, I'm going to put the link down below. Okay, it's, it's going to be the same link and you'll be able to choose the Bible study sign up, the shirts, the YouTube channel, the blog, whatever. Right. Just take a look at all that. I'm here to serve you. I'm here to bless you with the word of God. Okay. Um, we, we do Bible studies every Tuesday, but I think we're going to add Thursdays to that too. So we're going to be doing Bible studies every Tuesday night and Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time. But the Thursdays won't start until um, the beginning of May. 
I, I say until the beginning. But for right now, we're doing every Tuesday. We, we had it last night and it was awesome. It was awesome. So I encourage you guys to join that. Bless you, Natalie. Bless you, Fearson. Keep blasting this in Walmart. Let the people know. Go lay hands on the, on the sick. You know, go tell people about Jesus. You know, people don't understand why you're not scared or why you're not wearing a mask or why you're not sick or whatever. Let them know, hey, I'm actually in covenant with God and he actually protects me. I'm actually not an enemy of God and I'm not unrighteous like I used to be. So he actually blesses me and the curses um, that fall upon the sons of disobedience don't actually touch me. Be bold. Let's grow. I mean, that's what I teach. I mean, if you guys believe differently, if your pastor teaches, then hey, don't let me step on your toes. I'm just, you know, I'm just preaching what I believe I see in the Bible. But other than that, I'm going to leave you with that. Love you guys. Bless you guys. Take care. Let's grow. Let's grow what? Let's grow in knowledge. No, let's grow in, in the knowledge of God. Let's grow in the Lord. Let's grow in, in, in the truth of the Bible. Let's grow in fruit. Let's grow in good works. Amen. Let's grow in living for God. Let's grow at denying ourselves. Let's grow in not being confessors or hearers, but doers of the word of, of, of the Lord. Not being just confessors of Jesus, but followers of Jesus. There's a difference. You can confess, but if you don't believe in your heart, did it happen? The Bible says no. You could confess and say you believe, but if your faith doesn't have works, did it still happen? James says no. Faith without works is dead. So believe something. Or do something if you believe something. If you believe something, you're going to do it. You're going to live like it. Amen? <laughs> Bless you guys. I know this is challenging, but hey, let's grow is the motto. So I can't I can't be hitting you with like, hey guys, you know, it's an awesome day. Just believe that the Lord is for you. Everything is for you today. Look at the trees. Look at the leaves. Um, You know, nothing's going to go wrong. You're doing great. God is pleased with you. I don't know how you're living, but somehow I know God is pleased with you. I don't know if you're obeying God, but somehow I know God is pleased. I mean, I'm not going to hit you with that. All right? Because you're, you're never going to grow. I think with a pandemic that's going on right now, with the one that's going on right now, I think it's clear and plain, plain and, and, and clear that a lot of believers are not really getting equipped and discipled with the word of God. That's why a lot of people are stumbling. A lot of people are falling. A lot of people don't know what to do without church. They don't know what to do without a pastor checking up on them, without an accountability partner. They don't know what to do. They don't know. <laughs> oh, shoot. There's a sickness going around. They don't know what to do. They scared. They're having panic attacks and all that. Why? I think it's clear we haven't been preaching the Bible. We haven't been discipling people. We haven't been giving them the word. We haven't been teaching them even what Christianity is or what the new covenant means. We haven't been on, giving them understanding and teaching them and training them in the word of God. So I can't hit you with the same stuff they're hitting you because obviously from what I see, and I'm not talking about you individually, from what I see as a whole, the majority of what I see on social media and in the real world, Right, the physical face-to-face -face world at the store and, and, and where I go and the people that I know, it's looking shaky. Is you know whatever's been being preached out there is not really helping us much. It's not really working because this pandemic happened, and I see a lot of scared people, a lot of sick people, a lot of stumbling people, a lot of back paddle, back sliding people. Right. So whatever's being, whatever the majority of preaching is, and we know what it is, we, we know what's being preached on, on, on Christian TV. We know, we know what's famous. We know who's famous. We know who has the biggest congregations. It's obviously not working if the majority of Christian I see are definitely slipping and slacking right now. So let's grow. That's why I preach how I preach because we need the truth and only the truth sets you free. Amen. Bless you, Natalie. Bless you, Fierce, and let's grow.